Yeah, don't mind us, we're just rising around. But let's not put the cart before the Oris. Uh, the Gigabyte Aorus GAAX370 Gaming 5. It's a Ryzen AM4 motherboard CPU, the Aorus line from Gigabyte. This motherboard has quite a lot of features for the uh, you know AM4 platform. Um, the price is a little bit higher to reflect that. It's uh, 200 US as of the time of this video, but be sure to check prices because the prices fluctuate. I don't really like mentioning the prices on videos because the videos are usually pretty long lived because uh, you get sort of the first wave of buyers who buy when the product is released. And then you get a second wave of buyers who buy when the next generation product is released. So if you're watching this in the future because this motherboard is on sale, hello and welcome. Um, but you know, let's get right down to brass tacks for this motherboard. First, what's inside the box? So inside the box, we've got our driver CD. We've got an RGB header extension. We've got a rear IO shield, trying not to make plastic noises. You get some stickers and cable labels. We've got a couple bundles of SATA six gigabit per second ports. We've got some Velcro straps. And then we've got our high speed SLI bridge. So this motherboard does support high speed SLI if you're gonna run you know, an NVIDIA configuration, that's totally fine. We've also got the Gigabyte G connector, sort of front panel adapter. This lets you plug all your front panel cables in for your case uh, into this little plastic thing. And then you can just plug the whole plastic thing into the motherboard without having to try to figure out what the connectors are on the motherboard. Okay, let's take a look at the rear IO. At the back panel, we've got our combo PS2 port for a PS2 mouse and keyboard. That's handy for people like me that are still rocking an IBM Model M. Then we've got uh, two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports right below that. That is USB 3.1, five gigabit per second. Then on the next set of connectors, we've got another set of USB USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports and an HDMI connector. Now do note that the HDMI connector is only for the Ryzen CPUs that have a built-in graphics capability. So as of the time of this video, the only Ryzen CPUs that are out are Ryzen 7. Those do not have any built-in graphics capability, so that port is not gonna do much for you. But if you do get an APU or something else that's AM4, you can use it with this motherboard and you'll have HDMI out. Then right next to that, you've got your USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type A and then USB Type C. Now both of these are USB 3.1 Gen 2, that is 10 gigabit per second USB ports. Then right next to that, we've got our RJ45 LAN. This is a gigabit LAN adapter. And then right next to that, you've got another gigabit LAN adapter. Now one of these is serviced by an Intel i211AT and the other one is serviced by a killer NIC E2500. Below the NIC connections, we've got one set of USB 3.1 Gen 1, and then the other one is USB 3.1 Gen 2. This is a secondary set of uh, USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports that are serviced by the X370 PCH. The other ones that, that include the USB Type-C connector are serviced by an AS Media controller. And then of course, we've got our audio uh, connectors, including an optical SPDIF out connector. This motherboard has a total of seven fan headers. Um, you know, all the fan headers on the motherboard are four pin. There is a CPU fan and sysfan one through four CPU opt and then sysfan five and pump. Depending on how you want to run your fans, some of the, the fan headers support, you know, higher current and some of them just are designed for fans, PWM fans. Um, there is fan control from the UEFI, so you can control the fans directly from the UEFI. There are also two temperature, external temperature uh, sensor inputs uh, that are from the box, they're included in the box, EC temp one and EC temp two. Basically, you can use the included temperature sensors and sense the temperature anywhere you want. If you want, you can tape those to your video card, you can tape those to the inside of your case, you can tape those behind your motherboard, you can tape them to your M.2, you can locate those anywhere you want and the motherboard will read those temperature sensors uh, in and display it for you in the UEFI or display it for you in the monitoring software. So you can use that however you want. There are also two RGB LED headers on this motherboard and it is an RGBW uh, type configuration on the LED C2 connector so that you can use the new RGB strips that include white LEDs because red, green, red plus green plus blue is not wide enough apparently. And that's probably the widest thing I've ever said. Coming around to the front of the board, we have two SATA Express connections, a U.2, and two more banks of SATA connectors. Now, if you're using the U.2 connector on the front, it will disable the onboard M.2. So the, the M.2 on this motherboard is the one that's wired directly into the CPU, or the one that the AM4 CPU provides directly. And the motherboard gives you the option of using that bandwidth in a U.2 connector or in an M.2 connector, but you can't use both. The onboard audio is serviced by an ALC 1220. That's support for Sound Blaster X5 MB5 high definition audio, 2.4, 5.1, 7.1, and of course SPDIF, as I was mentioning before. There are a total of 10 
SATA six gigabit per second ports on this if you count the ones that are provided through the SATA Express connection, which works pretty well. It uh, supports the NVIDIA Quad GPU SLI and two-way SLI, as well as AMD's Quad GPU Crossfire X and the two-way Crossfire. So with the connectors and the features on the motherboard and you know the stuff that you can read in the manual out of the way, what's the result of our testing? Well, we have not had the boards for very long. We've only done very limited testing with a 1700X CPU, we're planning a more comprehensive look at Ryzen because Ryzen's here to stay. It's probably gonna be here for the next you know, five years or whatever. This is an eight core 16 thread part. And so it is aimed at enthusiasts and, and people that really wanna do a lot of fun, cool stuff. So we've been testing it on Linux because honestly, running a lot of virtual machines, doing a lot of heavy computation, uh, the kinds of things that you're not really doing on Windows. I mean, let's face it. Uh, so we've been doing a lot of testing with Linux. And one of the first things that I wanted to test was KVM on Linux. Well, I'm sorry to report that there's not really a, a good way to do GPU pass through on this motherboard right now. Uh, the biggest problem is the IOMMU groupings. If you install two graphics cards in the by eight by eight configuration, both of those will be in IOMMU group two, uh, which means that it's problematic to pass through one of the GPUs to the host operating system because you need them to be in different IOMMU groups. I didn't see an easy way to change that. There may be a way to change that. Maybe a UEFI update will fix that. Maybe there will be something like the uh, ACS downstream patch uh, like is on the Intel platform. That does not seem to work on the AMD platform, which, you know, probably everybody already knew that, but hey, I can give it a try anyway, whatever. I'll try anything once, it's probably fine. Uh, so that was really like kind of super disappointing because honestly, for highly multi-threaded workloads, like generating a bunch of threads that are all fighting over the CPU cores that were available, the system stayed surprisingly responsive and surprisingly snappy. So in terms of like a platform that can handle a lot of load on it without really bogging down, even when there's more stuff to do than CPU resources available, that part works really well. Uh, I really would love to pass four cores through to a Windows virtual machine. I'd really love to do some experiments with SRIOV, but the fact that KVM right now in its current state is problematic, just isn't gonna fly. I even tried moving a graphics card down to the by four slot that is provided through the PCH. That seems to be IOMMU group zero on this board, but everything in group zero is pretty much everything that is connected to the X370 PCH. Now, in terms of memory latency, testing this platform, 2933 is the fastest that we were able to clock the memory. We do have a DDR4 3200 kit. Uh, we, initially, we were not able to even get 2933 through a UEFI update. We were able to get that. So I think DDR4 3000, maybe DDR4 3200 might be the top end of what we see out of the first generation Ryzen boards. Uh, in terms of everything else, the onboard peripherals, the onboard Intel NIC worked fine under Linux. The, um, the audio codec worked fine under Linux. Um, everything was, was basically operational on this motherboard, including the as media controllers. This, this motherboard has quite a lot of extra controllers and such on the motherboard to provide more USB 3.1, 10 gigabit connectivity. All of that worked fine. Um, overall, uh, for the you know for the features that you get, there's a ton of features on this motherboard, and so uh, at the price point for the motherboards that we've looked at so far, it's kind of the middle of the road. But even though it's the middle of the road, um, it's got a lot more stuff packed onto it. You got the HDMI port, you got the extra USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, you got uh, other extra USB 3 ports. So it's a pretty good mix of features. If we can work out the pass through on the PCI Express peripherals, I think we'll really, really have a special platform. So that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I've got for right now. Um, let me know what your thoughts are. I'm looking forward to more testing. Again, this is really just preliminary information. More will be coming. Uh, if you pick up one of these or you have other results or there's other stuff that you wanna let me know about, post in the forum at level one text because it'll be there now from now until the end of time if it's if you're one of the second gen buyers do check out the forum thread because there's going to be all kinds of good information from people that have bought this board and what their experiences were fixes for things maybe future revisions that sort of thing so definitely come and check out the forums so it's enough rambling for me for now i'm wendell you'll find me on the forums at level one text i'm signing out and i'll see you there Now for our testing with the Aorus, I've got to say a big thanks. Uh, Kingston sent the DDR4 
HyperX Predator Kit, DDR4-3200. It has two XMP profiles, one of which, Profile 2, 2933, is designed specifically for the AM4 and Ryzen platform. We also have this Thermaltake, Contact Silent 12. It's a very effective, very inexpensive CPU cooler for the AM4 platform. Basically, it just snaps right into place. It's got four copper heat pipes and an aluminum base. Um, it's very, very effective. We're, we're running this with the 1700X. The 1700X had no problem clocking up to 3.8 gigahertz, almost 3.9 gigahertz. That is 400 megahertz above its stock clock of 3.4. So it's a very, very effective heatsink for the platform without being ludicrously expensive or as complicated as like, you know, a closed loop all-in-one cooler or something like that. So big thanks to Thermaltake and Kingston for sending the memory kits that we use to test with the platform.